The purpose of Free Thought Forum is to be vigilant to the encroachment of religion into government and to educate the general public as to what a free thinker is. No scholar can map them, no hunter can trap them, no person can deny. Die Gedanken sind frei, no person can deny. Hello and welcome to Free Thought Forum. I'm Catherine Farringer, the producer of this show and your host for this program. And this is going to be a dilly, I think, because inspired by the happenings up in Waco, I decided to do a program on cults. And who should I see when I turned on the television a week or so ago was uh, Douglas Brackenridge, who teaches religion in the Department of Religion at Trinity University. And so I had the nerve to call him up and ask him if he'd be on my show, and he said yes. So I, have, I welcome Douglas Brackenridge. Thank you. And I have two friends with me as well, Stanley Grayson, who is the editor of the uh, of the little newsletter for uh, Shasa, which is the San, San no, what is the Secular Humanistic? No, no, what is it? Secular Humanist Association of San Antonio. Yeah, we debated on which way to go, and and every now and then we <coughs> get mixed up and vote for the one we didn't vote for. And uh, Stuart Leno, who is a new member of uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation, right? Right. Very good. So happy to have you all here. So let's talk about cults. And uh, has anyone, what's the latest on that? I'm, I hate to say it, I didn't read the morning paper. Uh, well, they I about to heard today. No. Still about the same as the right. last I heard. Right. Well, what, uh, what causes this and what, what is the difference? I can't even figure out the difference between a cult and religion. Okay. Tell me. Well, we were talking about this before, before we came on and my, my answer to that is it, it depends on who's doing the defining, <laughs> all right? Because I think you could call Christianity a cult, and it was a cult. It was. Because mm -hmm. in the eyes of the Romans, uh, in the eyes of the Jews, it was a cult. And I, if, if we're going to talk about what we mean today, I'm assuming we're talking about cult in the context of, of Waco and so forth, uh, I think uh, a cult is, is seen as a religious movement that is not part of, of what we call mainstream, and it's the, it's the mainstream that defines what a cult is, so it, it's kind of a circular thing. Yeah. But it's, it's normally a group that, that is characterized by um, a, a charismatic leader. Usually there's someone who is a very charismatic leader who is the authority figure where you won't necessarily find that in a, in a more institutional religion. There may be authority figures, but they're not the same kind of charismatic, all-powerful figure. I think you also find a group that claims to have some kind of new revelation. You know, they have some new mm. insight or new ideas that, that uh, are, are perceived by other people who are religious as, as being bizarre or new or different. And that um, they, they often, in particular our context, are very fundamentalist in their use of the Bible. You know, the Bible is taken very literally, and um, they, that becomes the basis of their group. But, but you have groups, of course, that are cults that are not Christian, have nothing to do with Christianity. Uh, but, that, but I think they have some of these characteristics of, of being very authoritarian, very, uh, very much uh, tied to a leader, uh, a very exclusive kind of, uh, of revelation. And like this particular group, which, which we call a communal cult, uh, it, it withdraws from society and, and uh, lives by itself. But there are lots of cults, of course, that don't withdraw. You know, they, they simply live mm -hmm. everyday lives, and, mm -hmm. but, but their group is very cult-like because it has some of these characteristics that I was talking about. Uh, isn't it true that the, um, the cult leader usually establishes uh, uh, rites and ceremonies of certain kinds and um, um, establishes uh, what I would call a priesthood uh, where he is the authority figure, or she, and or she, or she. yes, oh, yeah. right. Claire and uh, right. uh, everyone is expected to uh, uh, yeah. follow that yeah. and and bend to the will of. of the, yeah, I, I think you, you, the, the, this charismatic leader is a very authoritarian figure, and and in most groups, if not all groups that we would call cult, that's that's true. Uh, I can also think of groups that I would call cults that don't necessarily have that uh, centralized figure. Uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Ekankar. Have you ever heard of Ekankar? Hmm, That's a group here in San Antonio. Hmm. What? Uh, that that, um, 
they don't they don't have a, an authority figure like like that. Now they are termed a cult, and I should say at the top of that, I don't like that term. I think it's misused. Uh, I, I think it's it's not a good label. I wish we would drop it. You know, I wish we really would because it has taken on a completely pejorative uh, connotation. And and I personally think there are many groups in this country that are called cults that are not dangerous, that are not don't have authority <coughs> figures. They're not going to hurt anybody. They just have unusual ideas. Yeah. You know, and like the middle of the earth people or whatever. Mm -hmm. They they think that that yes. there's a whole group of people down, the whole new world down inside the middle of the well, earth. There's a group something. called the garbage eaters. Well, sure. they, they, they believe in the part of their creed is in eating garbage. Now, yeah. is, there a, is there a certain kind of person that wants to be in a cult and do they go looking for the cult or does the cult look for them? Uh, that's a good good question. Good question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd say They're attracted to one another. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, I'd say that again, I think there's, it, there, there's two way, two things happening. One is that most of these groups are, are very aggressive uh, seeking new members. And if you notice the group in Waco, uh, although the Seventh-day Adventist church has rejected any connection with them, he's drawing his converts by and large from out of that milieu of people. They, they have an audience that they, they, they usually can target. But uh, I think it's also true that, that there are people that are looking for something that uh, they, they either uh, they're not finding it in in the more traditional religions, or they um, they they are looking for what I would call a sense of community. A, a lot of people find a great deal of community, and you know we live in a culture where people are lacking community, and they they can find a great deal of it in in one of these groups. Well, we're talking about a religious cult uh, on the, the current uh, situation up there. Uh, but cults, uh, there are all types of them. There's scientific cults, right. uh, there's right. uh, sex cults, there's uh, um, all Oops. sorts of things. Uh, and, that and could be called Elvis cult. Presley cults, right. et cetera. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So right. some of them, most of them, are harmless. Uh, I think that the, in this particular case, uh, this group got in trouble over the arms situation up right. there. Uh, legal and illegal arms right. uh, that they'd been uh, gathering, and that they'd been on a collision course with the federal right. authorities over that. Well, I think any group that breaks the law needs to be, you know, needs to be dealt with. I mean, I'd, I'd say whether they're religious or, or not. Uh, what I find uh, bothersome from my position is that I find people attacking a lot of these groups. Uh, and, and they're religious people that I'm talking about that mm -hmm. are attacking the groups oh. because they don't agree with their particular religion. And so they, uh, one, of the t one of the techniques is if you don't like a religious group, you call it a cult. Billy Graham loves Right, and I find that very <coughs> distasteful. Yeah. That's why I don't like to use the term, but yeah. I agree with you. I, 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 think, I think there, and of course, I think the other issue was there was some question of child mo molestation mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that had to be investigated. And, and as I say, I think any group that is suspected of any of these things, they you know they, they need to be investigated and, and dealt with. And uh, otherwise, uh, I think they leave talk alone. radio uh, sometimes, and uh, it seems that there's quite a few people on the on the talk shows that uh, think that the ATF, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms uh, mm -hmm. people uh, shot themselves in the foot on this and didn't handle it quite quite properly. Uh, does everybody agree with that or? I agree uh, with well, that. Well, they should I have known that the cuckoo. women and children were residing in that place, so oh. why did they storm in there with their yeah. automatic weapons? I, the, I couldn't figure that out. The Branch Davidians were not threatening anyone at that oh. time, so they should have waited for Koresh to go to town on a grocery trip and pick them up inside I, the road. I think yeah. everybody got that feeling that, that it was bungled. Very Noriega-ish, the same sort yeah. of thing, where we're going to make a big show of muscle and might and arms and kill a bunch of innocent people to do something that could have been done another way. I think, also, I think also the, 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 the dynamics of, the, of <coughs> that group is you have a group that believes that the, that the outside world is evil and that the outside world is, is coming to get them. And so Paranoid. you storm their place with guns or mm -hmm. with, with well, uh, as, I, as I understood, with, with percussion grenades. Uh, that, that that that's what they threw in there. That not you know not meant to kill anybody, but to make yeah. a loud noise. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, those things going off, uh, and you have your your family and children there. I think you're going to start. If you have that belief, if you yeah. if you are in a defensive position like that, you're going to start shooting. 
uh, that that part, I, I still would like to hear more explanation on that, but uh, it's well, easy to second guess. That's, isn't that part of the territory? Aren't most of these uh, uh, withdrawal symptoms part of paranoia in, in regard to the people? And so they, they are on the defense. Well, I think one of the characteristics of many, of not all of these groups, because I don't think you can generalize about cults. I mean, that's why I've, mm. I sound like a professor here, but I think it is that's true. Right. You can't generalize. You have to take each group separately, but there are some common characteristics that many of these groups are world-denying. You know, they are, there are world-affirming groups, there are world-denying groups. These are world-denying groups, and they, they find in the Bible, they find a, an authority, they find a, a, a literature that they can use, and, and that uh, they take books uh, like the book of Revelation, they take the book of Daniel, and they, these books are apocalyptic books. They are capable of all kinds of interpretations. And they, they, you can read any scenario into it that you want to. And, and so I, I, I think that, that it, it's a defensive mentality. It's a, it's, it's a, and if you want to say, you know, paranoia would be a word that, I, that I'd use. But they, they, uh, they see themselves, of course, as, as being the, the remnant, the, the only pure ones that are left kind of thing, and that, that the, the outside world is out to get them. So does uh, the general public have anything to fear from a cult if, say, a cult is located in one's neighborhood? Yeah. They pretty much like to remain by themselves, right? They're well, isolationists. They do like to have converts, most of them. Right. They, you know, they, they, but, like to, they, they like to have converts. I, I think what... I think what um, but then again, they're going after the vulnerable people. And so if, if say, a child is raised uh -huh. uh, in, a, in a solid household, are, are they capable of, what, what kind of tactics do they use? Okay, to well, I, I can give you some empirical evidence on this. I can give you some empirical evidence. There have been some good studies done of cults. Uh, a woman by the name of Eileen Barker did a study of the Unification Church, the Moonies. You've heard mm, of the Moonies? Indeed, right. I have. She did a study, a controlled study, in which, uh, if, if my memory serves me right, it was something like 500 different people, mostly young people, who were approached by the Unification Church, and she did this, uh, she was able to get the support of the Unification Church. She did studies on these people. Uh, at any rate, the figures come out something like this. 98 point something of the young people who were approached by the Unification Church never bought it. All oh, right. good. Uh, they, 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 some came to their meetings, some came to two or three meetings, but they walked off. So you're looking at about you know yeah. one percent of these students that actually joined, and mm -hmm. then the other fact is they don't stay. Cults are a revolving door. Oh. Mm -hmm. People are in and out. If, if uh, I don't know if you if you listened to one of the programs, uh, one on the network, they were talking to some former cult members, mm -hmm. and one of the questions was asked, "How many people are in this group?" And the former member said. Well, it's hard to say because they come and go so much. Uh -huh. And I don't think the outside world is aware of that. That yeah. I think they have a picture of these are people who are who are kind of brainwashed and give, have given up their autonomy yeah. and have, have abandoned their lives. That is not true. Because That's just a very small percentage of them. Very small mm -hmm. percentage of them. That, yeah. and, and the other thing you will note, that many of these people that belong to it were born into it. Does yeah. the level yeah. of... Uh, education or a scientific bent uh, have anything to do with yeah. the, the, the members? Uh, um, okay, I, again, uh, with, some, with some of the studies that have been done, uh, I, I can say this. It doesn't seem to be any connection between, for example, people that seem to have um, lower education or lower IQs. It doesn't seem to have any real connection and that, that many of these people that join these groups are, are you know, very intelligent and, and very well educated and come from upper middle class families. You know, uh, in, in, in the early days in the United States, what we called a cult was a lower socioeconomic phenomenon. Mm. That's not true anymore. That, that if you were to examine uh, go through these people. I think you'll find a lot of these people, professional people, have had... I know uh, there's at least one lawyer. Yeah, sure, right. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah. lawyer in a, uh, yeah. th there's yeah. a theory. There's a theory about joining cults. It's called the deprivation theory. And that is that people that join these groups have, have some lack. There's something that, that's missing in their lives and that therefore they seek these cults out. I don't think the, uh, the evidence is strong enough to support that. Uh, in fact, uh, again, some of the studies that are done based on whatever sci uh, psychological information we have, uh, th these, these young people are, are kind of 
you know, fairly well adjusted right. kids there. And, and they're going through a, a, a crisis of um, going from from adolescence or youth into adulthood, and, and that's the period of life. 19, uh, 18 to 23 is when they join, and they're usually out. Well, you can kind of look at the tactics used by televangelists and even your local uh, priests and pastors. And when the television evangelist gets on, on the TV, he's saying, uh, you out there in, in TV land, uh, if, if you have no hope, nothing to look forward to, Come into yeah. us. We'll give you Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, your life will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And so it's the tactics are very similar to what a cult leader well, may I, use. I, the I answers. The answers to everything. Right. Well, send I, me your I, money. I, I'll send you the answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think. I think. Now, I, I think that is more of a of a meaningful clue to people who join. Uh, I have it. I have had a lot of contact with people who who are members of, of cults, uh, and I have them come to my class, I talk to them, uh, mm. and and uh, uh, this is why I say I, you can't stereotype them, because you're surprised. Yeah, I mean, I look time. at you and say, you, 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 you know, Mooney, you look, you look just like a Mooney, you know. The, the nice people, and they're intelligent, and they, they've thought about what they've done, but um, so funny. often, though, they, they are people who are looking for what I call the big answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. The cosmic answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they want yeah. the cosmic. That's, that's probably what the high turnover rate too. They they, and they don't find they don't find it. They, don't find it. Find it. they exactly. say this is trite and silly, and I'm leaving. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. And and what happens though is this: is that if you think about the about the dynamics of this, um, Mary joins a cult uh, at 19. She gives up three years of her life. She drops out of college. After three years, she's tired of it. She's had enough of it. It it. It's like any other organization. It has its weaknesses and has its strength. So she wants back out again. All right. So what do you do? Do you go and say, "Look, I made a stupid mistake. Mm -hmm. I joined a group that that really didn't offer what it." Uh, no. What What do you do? You say, "I was brainwashed." Oh. Yeah. All right. I was brainwashed. Oh. These people. These people mesmerized me. Well, and and that and that suits the parent because then the parent course. is left off the hook. The parent. Yeah, the parent right. doesn't have to say, "Well, I had a dumb kid." Who, yeah. who gave up three years of her life, yeah. uh, my kid was brainwashed, and so everybody's happy, and it's the <laughs> cult that pays for it, and that's why I, I, am, uh, I sound like I'm defending the cult. You know, no, but I'm not I defend, but, but what I'm saying is I think many times uh, the, the truth of the matter is people choose to join, they, they choose to stay, they choose to leave, uh -huh. and it's that simple. Well, well there's uh, another dimension uh -huh. to this particular cult. Uh, the David Koresh and right. his association with the biblical David, right. plus uh, uh, he has a harem up there, a number of wives that Mary, as you're talking, uh, yeah. gave three years and more right. to this particular cult because right. there's several of those children that are uh, uh, born of uh, David Koresh. Right. And, and again, with, with communal groups, uh, we were talking previously about John Humphrey Noyes and uh, yes. the Oneida community, mm -hmm. that that um, that phenomenon has, uh, has, has been part of what we call the, you know, the cult movement for a long time, and uh, that, that uh, this is the other thing that I would say about cults is, this is nothing new. No, no. We, we think that this is a new phenomenon, and, and if you go back into 18th century America, we had cults. There are cults that I don't even know, I mean, I don't even know the name of. They were so small, but, but they were there. It, it, it's been part of, a, a, you know, if you're going to have religious pluralism, if you're really going to have religious mm -hmm. pluralism, then you're going to have it, mm -hmm. and you're going to have all kinds. And you're and, and you're going to it's going to run the, the gamut from yeah. you know yeah. what one to, uh, from A to Z, mm -hmm. and uh, I think sometimes um, people have been given the impression that what we call the cult movement is a phenomenon of the '60s. Now oh. it's not a phenomenon no. of the '60s. It it's more visible. Way back. It's been uh -huh. more. It's more yeah. visible. Well, we but, got uh, TV that helps. A that's lot. right. No, I think you're right. I think that does make <laughs> the sense. the Mormons, as an example, started oh. out as a cult, uh, exactly. and. Um, and and maybe some way. people they still change. oh they still do still they, right they, I have a textbook that calls them a cult and, <laughs> and, and so uh, what happens you know you, you can take uh, the sociologist uh, can can lay out a diagram for you. You, you if you start with a cult which which uh, when I use the word cult I mean just a new religious movement uh, a primitive religious movement uh, that that isn't <clears throat> necessarily tied to some other major group and those cults will 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 uh, follow. 
uh, a path. They'll either, they'll either go into extinction, which most of them do. That's what happens. They just die. Or they become what we call a terminal local cult. They never get beyond the, the region in which they start. Or they, be, they, they, they move towards coming being a denomination and uh, they become more socially acceptable and uh, they, they become, they, 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 they come into the religious landscape. And I think the Latter-day Saints are a group that in the 19th century were considered to be a dangerous cult. They are now part of the religious landscape. People mm -hmm. aren't, they know them, they know who they are. They're mainline. They're mainline, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, and, 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 and as I say, you know, the same process is true of Christianity because Christianity was perceived by the people of the time as, as strictly a cult, and I think that's... Mm -hmm. uh, I liked it too, the pagans considered them atheists, I love that. That's right, <laughs> that's right, because, because <laughs> they, they were against the, the prevailing culture mm -hmm. of, the, of the time, right? Uh, that, that, yeah. that they didn't have reverence for tradition and for well, the, uh, gods, the, right. the, the gods that were, were considered to be part of the uh, of the social structure, you know, that's it wasn't a theological belief mm -hmm. when they when they said they were atheists. They didn't mean in terms yeah. of a of a kind of a theological belief because most of the Romans didn't really believe in gods as as gods. It was just simply that was part of the family of tradition, and the Christians were perceived as people who wanted to turn all that upside down. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I'd like to get back to this uh, mm -hmm. indoctrination brainwashing subject again. Yeah. Uh, people don't like to call it brainwashing, but yet the indoctrination that they receive while in the cult, it runs very deep. And I've mm -hmm. seen uh, examples of the Koreshians who have left the cult and who no longer believe that David Koresh is Jesus, mm -hmm. but yet uh, they're still concerned that if he's killed and they don't believe in him, that they're going to suffer the consequences. Oh, so there, there is a lingering effect that. Oh, I, oh, it's very deep rooted. I, I, I think, uh, I think that's what maybe people are, and I, I know that's what parents are most concerned about is that this is not just a, a casual kind of uh, acquaintanceship. I mean, when a person makes a commitment to a to a group, uh, you make a deep commitment, right? And and that uh, it 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 does uh, affect the the total person and so that that I, I think these people that you see um, have been I, I think they'll probably the rest of their lives they'll mm -hmm. be affected by the but but I think the, the important thing I come back to again is I do think that the people make choices I think they choose and I think that that it's it's the same problem we have when uh, when I go into a used car lot I feel like I'm going into a cult center because <laughs> I know I'm going to be, a lot of pressure is going to be put on me mm -hmm. to buy this car, right. and I better be psyched up to, to not, to put, you know, don't bring my checkbook, yeah. and, and don't, yeah. be, because there's going You're to be this right. pressure. Right. And right. this happens all over. You, you have, have to, to be in the market, too. You have to be looking. Right, you have to be looking, right. Mm -hmm. but, but, but I think that, that we face the same kind of pressure that, that we see in these cults. We see it in all other evidence of life, and we, we pretty much say, uh, buyer beware. Mm -hmm. You know, we say, buyer yeah. beware. Yeah. Let's look at, a, at the confrontation that they, that they have up there. Uh, it's stagnant, apparently, and uh, do you think there's uh, some uh, clue that we're missing here that, that we might uh, unlock this puzzle? To, to get them to stop, to, to, to open yeah, up? Yeah. I wish I... I think I, everybody uh, ought to go away. Yeah. You know. Well, I think now, of course, it's one of these things where you, you, know, you, you draw these lines and it's very difficult to... To back off, uh, I, I, my guess is that what, what happens is they, that, that they'll finally just reach a point to where uh, they're, they're just simply their emotional energy is just drained, and they'll they'll finally come out. I mean, mm -hmm. particularly if particularly if they get they they get assurances that they're that they're they're going to be received. Well, fairly. I think like, as soon as they come out, they're, they're going to do uh, it. Well, well, everybody's well, afraid well. that uh, another Jim Jones uh, uh, situation is. I'd have to say it's possible. I do not think so. I mean, I, I don't think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that, uh, uh, but yes, uh, and, and I think that's probably what's motivating a lot of these people now is that what happens if they do back off and something happens, and, and of course what happens now if they threaten to come in and something happens, you're in a yeah, no-win no situation right now, as far as I can see, unless you can convince the people to, um, to give up. But, but again, I remind you, you have a group that believes that this outside world is not to be trusted. 
It yes. isn't. It, you're right. <laughs> it, 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 they're, they're, they're enemies. Well, he's paranoid, too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he, he says he's waiting idea. for well, instructions from God. <laughs> yeah. But yet, everybody, uh, a lot of people think he's crazy for saying that, that he's he's communicating with God. But yet, uh, your every average or uh, average everyday Christian communicates with thing. God every day, yeah, mm -hmm. but yet they consider him crazy for it. Well, this why obviously it's because he is acting uh, somewhat. Yeah, well, he, he's acting a bit irrational. But let's say he wasn't. Let's say he wasn't, and he made the same claim. You'd get the same response, mm -hmm. right? People would say he's crazy, right? All right. But um, uh, I, to me, the 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 distinction between you know a cult and mainline is that. Uh, one of the things is that within a major religious tradition, it has become part of the social landscape, and it has become common, and, and the, the, the same element of fear is not there. So the minister can, can talk about that. For, for example, I, uh, I've used that language, you know, say, well, God calls us to do this, or you should do this. Uh, and, and yet, I know that um, if, if someone was to push me on that and say, uh, you know, how do you know this, or, or uh, how can you verify this, or, well, God is telling me something different. You then, then you know, you'd be kind of caught up and say, well, uh, somehow, well, God couldn't tell you anything different. You know, th th that's the kind of response I think that people in in religion give because they say, uh, well, we all agree on what on what God well. says or what God doesn't. So, so that 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 I think the the the, the poor cultus is just. Uh, hammered because the, the cultist doesn't believe what the main what the majority believes. Well, he's right. waiting on a message from God. Maybe yeah. we ought to have Rush Limbaugh call him. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Oh, excuse right. me, I laughed so loud. Right. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I, I think again that that uh, that part of what we have in this country, and, and this is not original with me. One of my colleagues said that if you believe in religious freedom, you have to put up with a lot of garbage. You know that 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 is simply a fact that you you have to deal with a lot of things that you think are senseless, meaningless. Uh, but if you are ready to allow people the right to believe what they want to believe, yeah. then you got you, that's you're going to have to put yeah. up with it. You know? I, well, it's not so much I mind what they believe, but I I just really don't dig all this this gunning and the uh, what is it called alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Yeah. I just I don't understand the the need suddenly after these people have been there a long time, right? right. And they knew they were buying arms. They right. knew they had them. I still cannot. To me, they're just as kooky as the cult. Right. Well, Stan, Absolutely. you had made a point well, earlier about that, saying that that's not a, that not sort kind of a First Amendment problem, but uh, no, it's yeah. a Second Amendment yeah, right, problem right. that they have up there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. These people uh, have a cache of arms, and and some of the arms are illegal, and that's 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 yeah, where the right. confrontation came right. from. Right. Well, it took them a while to catch on, didn't it? Because right. you don't build that just in a day. That arsenal they've got up there. Right. So. Well, it's up to for the investigators to decide what's going to happen with those guys. Well, I'm right. not too happy with the way they've been investigating so well, far, but anyway. One of, one of the things that I worry about is that, that though out of this is going to come a kind of an uh, anti-cult reaction again that's, that's going to put every group in the same... Yeah, in, the same in that same kind of... Yeah, uh, who's going to determine the limits? Yeah. Uh, what what are the limits for a cult? What, <laughs> yeah. what do we use as a basis? Nobody knows. Well, Nobody I, knows. Well, well, I think you, you, go, you go back again yeah, to the fact that... You're not going to believe this. We've right. got to to wind it down oh, already. Do. But okay. Go back to what? Quick, tell me. <laughs> what are we going to say? Quick. Well, uh, okay, I guess I've forgotten. Oh, darn, I scared right. it right out of you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Basis, I, uh, uh, yeah, how, who well, is going to decide? Well, I think the majority... Yeah. Is going to define. That's the way it's all. Society. Let's call it. Is going to make the definitions. Yeah. And that's going to be the the, the, well, the mainstream. Hope. They're going to well, define. Hope they do it. And soon, this is goodbye from Free, Free Thought Forum. Tune in again next week for another wonderful, controversial program. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to duke or dictator. No person can deny, Deacon Duncan Sin Fry.